My name is Professor Cathy Barnes, for those of you who don't know me, although most of you do. And um, I've got my colleague with me, um, Raj. Hello. Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the Institute and what we do. So if I just get, give Raj a moment to introduce himself, because he's new to us. Yeah, I am Raj. Uh, I joined quite recently at this university as a professor of marketing. And right now I'm working with Cathy at this Retail Research Institute and managing some of the aspects of research themes that we have here. I'll talk about my research themes later. <laughs> okay, thank you, Raj. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to introduce um, the Retail Institute and what we do. I'm gonna explain the things that interest us and reach out to people to say, you know, if you're interested in those, we'd love to talk to you. Um, but one of, one of my key objectives for hosting this event today was to kind of reach out to people and say we'd love to work with, with people, either um, other academics, other industry, and I'd like to show you some ideas that we've got for how that might work going forward. So what is the Retail Institute? Well, some of you we've known for a long time, um, and in fact some of you even knew us back in the day when we were a Faraday. And we were one of the original um, Faradays that were launched by Lord Sainsbury's back in 1999. We've come a long, long way since then, because then we were focused very much on packaging. And packaging is still at the heart of what we do, but obviously we do an awful lot more throughout the retail supply chain now. So we, you know, we say we've been around for 16 years, so although we're launching today and we're delighted to have been conferred to the title of Institute, in all honesty, we've been doing this for quite some time. So we are an academic research centre and we, we want to build this, or we are building, this um, area where industry and academics can work together and both sides get something very valuable out of that collaboration. Um, we're based here at Leeds. And we're connected to all sorts of businesses and some of our, our friends in business are here, we've got lots more. Um, and we support those businesses to do innovative things, to do research bids, to work with students and to access some of the clever ha things that do happen in universities. Because some of us actually don't all sit on ivory towers, we actually kind of know what's happening out there and we're really happy to get our sleeves rolled up and get stuck in. And those are the kind of academics that we work with. There's um, a picture of some of our Motley crew, there's clearly a lot more that um, work with us now, it's a very, very bad picture of me, but um, <laughs> we've got this vision to bring through to bring together the players influencing the retail industry and to be known as that central place where you can come to for innovation and impartial knowledge against these big business challenges. These are some of the companies that we work with. Not all, and we haven't worked with some of them for a little while, but every single one on there we have done some business with over the past few years. Um, We'd love Asda Walmart to be on there. <laughs> and obviously, um, we've done all sorts of different things for these companies, a lot of which, unfortunately, I can't tell you about. But we have got three case studies later on where we can tell you very clearly about what we did and how we delivered value for the businesses that we worked with. So what is it that we do? What, what really interests us, and I think what Mark was talking about earlier was really interesting because I think there's some real nice synergies there, because although we have retail in our title, um, we're not just about the store and the store selling in the traditional retail sense. Our theme is much broader than that. So I'd just like to invite Raj. Oh, well, no, actually. So we've got three themes. We've got consumer of the future, We've got product and packaging innovation, and then we've got retail business globalisation. So we'd like to, like to tell you a little bit more about each one of those and what we mean. And Raj leads the consumer of the future piece, so I'd just like to uh, ask him to talk through that. Yeah, thank you, Cathy. <coughs> it was very interesting to know what uh, ASDA is doing and the problems which ASDA has uh, highlighted in front of us. 
because many of the things which the, the problems which they are facing or the intellectual challenges which they are addressing at this moment we are doing it from our uh, like uh, point of view as well we are doing academic research based on such kind of problem uh, so the first thing like what we are going to do is <coughs> First, let me explain, what do we exactly mean by consumer of the future? Because that is one of our research theme. Now, when we talk about consumer of the future, now we all shop, okay? Like, so what we do is, sometimes we go to the store to buy our stuff, sometimes we buy it online, as he was uh, pointing out, sometimes we are using our mobile app. So basically, a consumer of the future is using various kind of technological means in order to interact with the firm, in order to interact with the retailer. And then what we are trying to do is, we are trying to find out how exactly the retailer can provide an optimal consumer experience at each of those touch points. So whenever the consumer is going in store or whenever they are purchasing anything online or they are using their mobile app, how exactly, what are the consumers looking for? What are their requirements? What are the basic backgrounds which the retailer should have, should provide? so that all these things should come together and give the ultimate consumer experience. So that is all about consumer of the future. But what we do here is <coughs> we have divided the big theme of consumer of the future into some sub-themes. Now, first of the sub-theme is <coughs> on the online world. So understanding browsing behavior, understanding consumer behavior in the online world. Now, the challenges which he was pointing out, if you see that the first challenge is many a times what we do is we go to the website, we browse the website for some time, we collect information, but we do not buy anything from the website. So how exactly a website or an online medium can improve the stickiness of the website? How exactly they can convert the browsers into buyers? That is one of the challenges which the retailers are facing and we are trying to address the problem from our side. In order to do that, if we go back to the previous slide. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. In order to do that, what we are doing is, we are trying to develop a sort of an optimal user interface, as I said, at each of those touch points, in the online world, in the mobile world, in the in-store world, whatever you see. So how exactly we can develop a personalized user interface, which the retailers can use and provide the best possible customer experience. So that is one of the areas of research that we are addressing at this moment. The next thing that we are addressing is very important as well as Mark was pointing out. How exactly the web investment can bring us return, right? So we know that web investment is a very, very big investment from the retailer's point of view. So how exactly it can bring return? So what is the return on web investment? That is another area of research that we are addressing at, at this moment. And in order to like, do all these things, what we are doing is we have tied up with some big retailers, the, one of the big four, plus we have tied up with some small and medium, like small retail solution providers in order to run the package that we are trying to develop. Plus we are uh, linking our PhD student dissertation with such kind of projects so that we can get the optimal academic output as well. <coughs> The next thing that we are trying to address is, is very, very familiar in today's world. How exactly the retailer can address intense price competition? Now, again, in today's uh, BBC News, you must have seen how Morrison is making laws. The profits are going down because of the discounters. So again, the whole thing is what exactly drives trust? What exactly drives experience? What exactly drives satisfaction? What are, what are the determinants? how the resources which the retailers can use in order to deliver the sort of experience which the customers are looking at, at various interfaces. That is one of the big areas of research that we are addressing at this moment. And of course, it has to be linked with the performance. So how does it influence the bottom line of the company? So these are some of the challenges we are addressing at and we are working uh, with others. And as I said, all these things are being done with the retailers. All these things are done with real life data. Plus we are using our PhD infrastructure in order to support all this kind of research. Anyway, like this is the theme which I am trying to address at this moment. 
and I will be happy to take your question towards the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. So the second theme that we have is very much um, my area, and it's the, the area that I'm particularly interested in. I think uh, Professor Slade said earlier, I'm actually a, um, a misguided engineer who, who, uh, who has stumbled, stumbled into retail. Um, and, and what I've been interested in since really, and um, I've, I've always, um, I actually worked for Procter & Gamble for another number of years. So I've always been interested in, engineers and designers can design products and that's great, they're great at doing that. But how do we know anybody actually wants to buy that product? And within a retail supermarket context, in a lot of, com in a lot of times, you're not even buying the product, you're buying the packaging. So in that way, how can you create this synergistic loop between the consumer, the product and the pack and make it as an attractive proposition as possible so they fly off the shelf? And that's okay when you've got big budgets and it's not that hard if you're in the luxury or your Burberry or your um, one, of, one of the large fashion brands. But when you've got very, very, very low margins and you're selling a gazillion an hour through retail stores like Asda, how can you actually get that innovation to stick at a very low cost whilst considering the fact that you still have to be able to maintain a good shelf life, you've got to, it's got to have integrity through the supply chain, it's got to be able to be easily disposed of at the end and in, in food stores it's not got to kill anybody. So it's quite a large challenge to actually look at how you develop these products and their packaging in a, such a way that the customers find them delightful for want of a better word. And that's really the, the purpose of this. So we want to understand how consumers and technology can impact the business profitability. Because there's a lot of technology that's now happening in the retail store. We've heard about a lot of it from Mark. But there's, there's things like mobile payments that are coming in. You know, be interesting to see what view uh, as to have on that going forward. Um, there's all sorts of um, near-field communication type things that can happen with the product that could change the way you interact with them. But also, in terms of packaging, um, it is now possible to print a label that can sing to you. It's possible to print a bottle that can run a video at relatively low cost. And how's that going to change the interaction with a retail store? Nobody really knows, and these are all questions that we're looking at. I. Um, was part of a team that pioneered the work of Kansai Engineering into the UK. We brought it across from um, Japan uh, back in the early 2000s. Kansai Engineering is a way of linking products and emotions so that you can develop really innovative new ideas that consumers really do like. And I tend to use that as one of the main tools in, in my work. And that's going to be, that, that's intrinsic to this theme as well. But I've also got an interest in sensory interactions because within a store we're talking about um, interacting through all of our five senses and there's a lot of data to show that if, you, if your product speaks to two or more of your senses you will get a significant uplift in sales and in fact we'll see a case study on that later on. Um, and I'm particularly interested in how our sense of touch can enhance sales as well. So all of those are happening through this programme of work. So how do different sensory inputs from products and packaging change by buying behaviour? Can we provide heuristics to support the sensory innovation throughout the supply chain? Can we, can we create, for example, um, in the world of colour, there's a Pantone chart that you can get, so you all know that colour 3270H is a particular colour. Can we have that for tactile? That would be a very interesting innovation. And what does that mean to sales within a retail context? And how can we evaluate the impact of this innovation on performance? Because if you spend a few pence per item on creating a new product, 
you've got to have some confidence that that's going to result in increased sales, not just for the retailer, but for the brand owner and the product manufacturer and the packaging supplier and the, and the product producer. So everybody has to see their profit through the supply chain. And can we link that innovation to that profit? And what are the best tools and techniques to measure those experiences? And these are all things that we're working on very um, closely with uh, industry and academic collaborators. Now those were the two themes and, and Raj and I have led those now and we're starting to build them and starting to build a body of work through those. Um, but by talking to our um, industry um, clients, they've said to us that the business globalisation is also very important. So we've got an emerging theme that we're starting to build and starting to try to understand what it means in a retail context. In the UK, the retail industry is, 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 is changing. As Mark said, we're seen as, as potentially the leader, certainly in the Western world, in, in, in retail and online retail. But the, a lot of the growth is happening over in the Asia-Pacific region and potentially in South America. What does that mean for retail in the UK? Can, we, can these businesses become global? Can we change or is it all about online and what are the new business models that might start emerging from this do we um, cut out the retailers and start to go directly to the brand manufacturers for subscription services in the way that maybe Simple Human do, for those of you who know who you can have subscription services to a bin and, and bin bags and you never need to worry about buying them again, that model could be rolled out to all sorts of different products, when you buy a washing machine you could buy a, a, a lifetime supply of aerial tablets, for example. And with respect to us, that, that, would, that would change your world again. And, and these things are being talked about in many companies. Um, but this, so this is an emerging theme, born from industry coming to us and telling us that work needs to be done in this area. So Raj and I need to put our heads together and decide exactly how this how this uh, theme needs to emerge and if any of you have got any thoughts, expertise and understanding in that area, we'd be delighted to talk to you. So we've kind of laid our stall out now, this is, this is what we're about, this is what we at the Retail Institute are interested in doing and working with people on. Not exclusively, as with everything we do things at the fringe of, of, of our themes, but those are kind of the core um, capabilities and, and interests that we have. But what are, what, what are the opportunities um, that we could have for working? Well, we do all the usual sorts of things that an academic in, um, outfit does. We do um, research, training and professional development. Um, we run EQ, EU and U, sorry, UK and EU funded projects. We do reports for companies. We do bespoke industry research. We do the full gamut of, of everything there. But the thing I want to talk to you about is a unique thing that we do have, which is our industry membership. We have a group of, it's, it's as you can imagine, it's um, a changing number, but somewhere between 20 and 25, mostly very large companies who have become members of our institute. Okay? Um, that most of these companies are very happy to be known as members and they include um, Marks and Spencers, Waitrose, um, uh, Unilever, Nestle, Procter & Gamble and, and many other big brand owners along with some packaging suppliers and some smaller companies and I will give Vicky a name check where I can't see her. <laughs> BASF are also one of our very, very strong members and they're interested in being with us because it helps them understand what the retail supply chain needs from the chemical industry. And they find it very, very useful. Would that be fair, Vicky? <laughs> um, but what this offers academics is a real rich source of companies to work with, to collaborate with, and for the companies themselves to collaborate together. And what we've started... What, what the companies get is um, an expert advisory system, we send out research bulletins, and the thing that we've just launched this year, thank you to Tracy, who's our membership manager, 
um, is um, special interest groups. We've launched our first special interest group in the Consumer of the Future theme, um, which went very, very well earlier this year. We plan to launch them in each of our main themes. And that gives academics a real opportunity to start to engage uh, with our uh, companies and, and start to work with them on research of mutual interest. We also run a number of events. Our next big event is we're taking a group of companies over to Sweden to find out the latest in um, electronics that's happening over there in the retail context. I'm sorry, I didn't mention Adar as, uh, <laughs> as a member there, Sharon. <laughs> and so we're taking a number of um, companies to find out what's happening in the retail electronics world in this area of um, unpack sensors and um, mobile interaction. There's some really, really clever stuff going on there. A lot of it funded by Ericsson. Um, and then um, we also have our big event, which we're holding in London this year, where all of our main um, industry members come along, get together, we put on a big conference for them, and we have a little bite to eat in the evening and a few lemonades. <laughs> um, but in terms of, so that wasn't a self a membership in terms of companies, but it's a term for anybody who, who would like to get involved from a research perspective, we'd be delighted to talk to you about how you can start interacting with our members group. And that's it really, that's all I have to say. Um, I thought I had a slide, um, it's obviously gone, but um, the, f the final thing I just wanted to say is, um, apart from thank you for coming today, is that we want, as uh, Professor Slade said at the start, we want this to become a regular event, probably annual, where we'd like to create this uh, conference where both industry and academics are equally welcome and benefit from the interaction that they get together to find out both about what's happening in the academic world that could be of interest to industry, but also what's happening in the industry world in the retail sector that academics can support. Um, probably it's going to take us a little while to get this up and running, but if anybody would like to help us run that conference in future on a like editorial committee or peer review panel, I'd be delighted to hear from you and then we can start to pull a little group of interested people together um, and then uh, corral that going forward. And it, so, thank you. Raj, have you got any final comments? No, yeah, thanks for listening. And if you have any query, of course, you can let us know. Or do you have any questions for us yeah. <laughs> at this moment? Ah, I can share that. <laughs> As a mere mathematician, I have little knowledge of the retail sector, but I can share question and answer session. So, any questions? I have a question. What's, um, what's the most impactful innovation in in retail or associated. Okay, I, I think, I, Without mentioning names. Well, 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 I, well, I can actually mention this one because oh, they right. allow us to talk about this one. So a few years ago, we did a piece of work with Reki Benkiza, um, and they wanted to launch a new uh, aerosol. Well, a, a new air freshener, a new oh, aerosol sorry. air freshener. And you know this story, don't yeah, you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> And what, um, what they wanted to do was basically launch an aerosol that didn't have um, any volatile organic compounds. So there was no badness, no, no, uh, po no bad chemicals within the aerosol. But the problem was the customers were saying to them, but that's what we like about it. We like the fact we can squirt our aerosol around and it, it, it squirts and fills the room with these nice things and non-aerosol air fresheners don't work like that. So we worked with consumers and we found out quite quickly that really it wasn't the squirtiness that they liked, but it was to do with the droplet size and how many droplets were actually in the mist. So what we did was we worked with Reckitt Ben Kieser to design a new nozzle for this aerosol that um, created the same effect as an ordinary aerosol, but without all the nasty chemicals, so it was still a pump action. Um, that product was launched, it was called the Aqua Mist, you can still buy it in all, um, all uh, Asda Walmart stores around the country, <laughs> <laughs> price 1.99, <laughs> buy two get one free, 
Um, and it, it won Best Product in the UK, the US and Australia in the years that it was launched. That's enough of that. Blame yourself up. Okay, well, thank you very much. If there are no further questions, are we moving to a, a, yeah, we're a going tea to break? break, now. A tea break, break now. Now. Thank you very much, Mark, particularly for... Thank you. Thank you.